Good morning, everybody. I thought that today we could continue our studies of autumn beets. So this is Indian corn. Alrighty, uh, the colors for today is I'm going to make the base of the corn just out of a fat tray ivory. Um, and I'm going to use a lot of encased canes for the little kernels. And the reason I'm using ivory is because for some reason I think that it helps the encased canes kind of stand out. So these are all my encased cane colors. Uh, I've got yellow with some amber, transparent amber over it, some different browns and purples and oranges. So those are going to be the little kernels. And then for the husk, I have, this is Sim Pistachio Ice Cream, and I'm going to go ahead and make some leaf cane, um, just a paddle leaf cane, because I had some leftover shorties here that I made, and I really like this color. It's very fall and muted. It's not that bright green crazy color, so we're going to make some of that, and those are our colors for today. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to do a quick review of encased canes, since on this bead I'm going to use a lot of them. And one of my favorite color combinations with encased canes is a fetre. Oops, hang on, I didn't turn on my thing. Oh, sorry about that. Too much going on, not enough coffee. <laughs> So one of my favorite color combinations is the Ephetre uh, Lemon Yellow with a Medium Amber Transparent. And this gives you like a really, really pretty goldenrod kind of yellow. And as you guys know from all of my past videos, I really like using encased canes. I just think that it gives your your element or your detail just uh, this depth that you can't get when you're using just plain opaque canes. So, and again, I'm doing a design where all the little kernels, they're all next to each other, and I don't want those colors to like run together. And then you end up with a piece of corn that has one giant kernel on it. <laughs> So, I've got some wraps just put around my yellow there. I'm going to crank up this torch a bit. And now I am going to marver down that, um, that transparent amber just to get it kind of smooth and kind of to shove out some of the bubbles and the ridges. And I, I like my encased cane to have like an even encasement all around the center of the opaque just like that and we're just gonna marver it down a little bit okay and then at the end here I'm just gonna tap it in that's kind of like a big yellow blob so I want I want the colors to all touch each other so when I pull it I pull it even all right let me heat up this little encased barrel here and I got out my super tweaked tweezers. These poor tweezers, I need to get a new pair. The ends are all melted and bow-legged and I can't grab anything. And there we go, we're just letting it cool a bit. And now I start to say, how big are kernels in a kernel of corn? Are they big kernels? Are they little kernels? There we go. All right, that's good. So, I'm going to pull that off, set it over here to cool, and let me take off this tippy tip. Um, so, just as a FYI, I was dunking my tippies like this, my little tippy tips, just directly into the water. And what I found is, when you put this in, yeah, that piece comes off, but then you have all these little micro fractures in your rod, and then you go to use it and it explodes. So instead of dumping the whole rod in a bowl of water, now I just pull off the tip that I don't need anymore and I put that in my frit water and I don't destroy 
my rod of, um, of opaque. And I won't be surprised the next time I go to use it when it explodes when I put it in the, in the flame. <laughs> All right, so on this review, I'm going to go ahead and make just a little paddle ribbon king. Oh, man. And I find sometimes these creation is messy colors. They're a little shocky, so you have to... They're good for me because they make me slow down and not um, be in such a hurry to make my stuff. So that's good. Sometimes shocky is good. I know when I slow down or when I try to go too fast, I mess up. And I really took my time this morning to try and slow down, get my camera set up correctly. I cleaned my workstation before I got started. <laughs> Uh, and I also only had half a cup of coffee instead of a whole cup of coffee. And that's probably good, too. Okay, just getting a little blob here put on. And then I'm going to mash it down. Again, this is a review of Leaf Cane. But I haven't done one in a while, and so I thought, I'm going to do this. And also, making the cane is kind of my first step into making my beads is go ahead and get your canes all ready, get your materials all pulled together. And then when you go to make your bead, you're all set. Okay, this part is the save the shorties part. These little canes I made, leaf canes, were just in my bowl, my little shorty bowl. So I'm just gonna put some stripes down here from this old cane that I had. And right now I'm thankful that I don't have my long fingernails on. <laughs> All right, see, we saved the shorty. That's probably good. I, I wanted some of that um, pistachio ice cream to kind of stick out a bit. So I didn't want too many stripes, maybe some little ones right on the sides here. Now when you're making these paddle canes, remember you have the center of the paddle but you also have the sides, so don't forget to decorate the sides. All right, let's heat up that paddle a bit. I'm going to press this in because I'm pressing it in because I feel like it. <laughs> All right, there we go. We're ready now. You know, I could crank up my torch. Here we go. Come on, little paddle on a Sunday morning. Get hot. All right, that looks good. Let me get the center a bit. And I'm going to pull this out to a nice flat little paddle. And don't go too fast. You can really control the thickness of your stringers by controlling the speed at which you pull. And But you got to hang on to it. Okay, that's probably good. I like that. It's a nice fat leaf cane. You can see all the striations in it. So sometimes my canes, they're not that long. Build what you need, you guys. It's always good. Okay, I'm taking that little piece off. Into the frit go goes the little piece. All right, we've got our canes built. Time to make the bead. Okay, here we go. I made a little barrel bead out of that um, ivory and I kind of shaped it into a little skinny bicone because I think corn has a bicone shape, I think. And I want my corn to be anatomically correct <laughs> if corn has an anatomy. <laughs> and now I'm going to start putting in the kernels and I'm going to grab that um, yellow amber that I made first and just go ahead and now Here's the time for dots. And I just go through and start putting down dots. And then maybe halfway through, I grab a different color and put that down. And I'm trying to get the kernels like in a straight line. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. But, oh, I'm also shaking. Why am I shaking? And I got some bright yellow here and some purples and some browns 
and I should have grabbed some red. But yeah, here we go. Just little yellow, orange, red, purple dots. Whatever you like. I was using my leaky pen over, I think it was periwinkle. And I understand that this corn has um, mainly those yellow dots. So I'm going to do mainly yellow dots. And I don't do the whole, um, the whole bicone. I just do maybe four rows because the rest of it's going to be all covered up with, um, with the husk, with the leaves. So I just do enough to let it peek out a bit. And on my orange, I did use that striking transparent. So we're going to strike it at the very end. Whenever I use striking colors, I just don't worry about them until the very end of my bead. And then I go ahead and strike everything. Let's put one there. Let's put a brown one on. Right there. And maybe an orange next to it. And this is all just eyeballing what looks good to you. Even though you can't see what the colors are because they're hot. <laughs> Imagine if you will, you have this corn. There we go. Okay, I think that's good. There's all of our little dots inside of our corn. Let me get these out of the way. And I'm just gonna kinda um, flash them down a bit. I don't really smash these guys. They're in there pretty good. I'm not worried about them popping off. Okay, let's go ahead and get my pistachio ice cream. And we'll heat that up. Cause it's a little shocky and I'm scared. <laughs> and then we're gonna make the husk. And the husk, usually for the long husk, I get too lazy to make canes, so I just take a rod of color, whatever I like. Um, this pistachio ice cream is cool. The Sim Camouflage makes really great husk. I've used Dark Ivory before as a really light colored husk. But this pistachio ice cream, it's a nice color. I really, I was so excited when Creation is Messy started coming out with these kind of muted greens. Like I have never seen colors like the camouflage or, or this pistachio. Usually we're stuck with like Kelly green and olive, but this color came out and I was like, oh, that's pretty. Okay, the husks right there, right up, bumped up against the little kernels. And now let's go ahead and take that ribbon cane that I made and I use this for the little leaves right at the bottom. So right there on the bottom, kind of in between each of the, each of the pistachio drags, each of the pistachio husk leaves, I just put in, it's just a little added something, something. And then right at the bottom of my kernels here, I'm gonna go ahead and swipe one there and let's swipe one there and right there. And there you go, guys. That is Indian corn. Now let's go ahead and make sure all of the little blobs at the top are smooshed down and flat so they don't break off when you drop them on the garage floor. And now is the time to slightly strike those oranges. And I think they mostly struck while I was playing around with the husk leaves. So I don't see anything that's clear running through. So there you go, guys. That is Indian corn. Have a great day. I'll be back soon. Bye.